spot in the regular season. They have another chance tomorrow against TSM as well for Kill to do that. But Immortals on the same side, they are now a win behind playoff position. CLG is at five and Dignitas are at five. And they've got to win either here or tomorrow against FlyQuest for a chance at the postseason to play a tiebreaker. Or hey, if they win both with some luck, they just get the spot at six wins. But Immortals are fighting for their playoff lives. They've got to win at least one of the next two. We'll see if they can do that at some point. But it's going to be an exciting draft. You've got a counter pick, Akali, from Jensen. It's going to be hype. It, it is going to be very, very exciting. And, and you are right. It is 10-16 where those buffs came through for Akali. The win rate went up a couple percent, so very significant. It's also interesting that we saw Akali and Lucian both this weekend. You know, double right. front out the Lucian. Jensen bringing out the Akali right before their buffs when we haven't actually seen them coming out before. Uh -huh. uh, this, is, this is a big step away from what TL has been doing, though. Their consistent damage in this comp is pretty bad. When yeah. you're looking actually over at it, it's basically just the Ash. You have essentially three tanks if we kind of put Thresh into that sort of you know bucket, uh, and then you have an Assassin and and you know, a decent uh, decent high DPS uh, out of the Ash. But sure. this this is a, a very atypical composition here from TL. It's it's not as though they are just guaranteed to win late game team fights if they sit back. Yeah. Uh, I think that they could easily lose uh, if they are not proactive. So they're going to have to show us a, a bit of a different look. Azale, this is not only the first Akali, this is the first melee champion Jensen has played this split. Like, he is playing just magic damage range champions. Azir, LeBlanc, TF, Zoe, like, that is all he plays. He is back to Assassins here, and I want to see how it goes. And I, I want to give credit, like, Insanity is a very, very good player. Uh, I think he is, like, he and Tactical are my easy front runners for Rookie of the Year. I think they've both been very good so far in 2020. Immortals going for a late invade here on the Olaf to try to find themselves an early chunk. They're going to, I believe, fully ship to the Knight here. I don't believe anyone saw each other on the way in, but it's going to be an easy blue buff steal as Broxa is doing, I like this. So, yeah, Broxa is doing his, like, no leash red buff top side. We get an early aggressive look in from Impact to say, okay, it's not a blue buff start from the Olaf. Exactly. But with this pathing here, with Hakuo coming from the top side of the river through that brush, it means they know they invaded Doom. Yep, they know that, and and that, that was actually a pretty risky move there from from Mortals. They walk in, you miss the binding, so they're actually oh, taking so much damage, but that one damage. hits. Ignite is on, good damage, good play. They got him on trap, they're running out of hell! And that's going to be first blood coming through. Apollo took a long fight with Summoner TP. If they had healed, they were fine. If they had something else, they were fine, like an Ignite. But they didn't have all the combat summoners. And now the re-engage. Korja J will not be rooted. Tactical can walk back to lane. And oh my gosh, TL got handed first blood in the bot lane. Yeah, I mean, I can't believe they just opted into the, the full 100-0 all in after they missed the binding. I mean, they do have heal because because Hakuo had yeah, it, Hakuo, sure. but they, they don't have double combat summoners, so your point still stands. And, you know, they just kind of wandered up and just fought to the death. That was pretty bizarre. Uh, you know, I, I understand that it's a fairly strong um, set of champions you have here, but once the binding misses, you just need to walk the long way around. Instead, they walk in, the flay lands here from Korja J, they get that early heal, and then it just felt like they got a little bit baited, perhaps, you know, by this binding land. Uh, because the Ignite still comes through, the heal had already been used early for them. He gets flayed in again, and then goes for the Q here, but Flash is still available, so Tactical with a nice Flash. Uh, but that was not even like, you know, best case, yep. they kill off Tactical because he doesn't Flash that for some reason. Mm -hmm. But Court JJ was still full health, and the other two were still going to die, right? It's not as though you were about to win that fight, so pretty surprising. Uh, at the very least, though, Tactical has no farm, so... Uh, they did push it back to base. The first blood went to Core JJ, so it doesn't really matter that much. And we'll see if uh, the Immortals 2v2 can recover from here and try to you know, take it uh, as, as they would have more expected, you know, playing from the yeah. advantage. At the end of the day, there is still Summoner TP used. A plate already taken in the bottom side. Chomp comes down from Alorum in time. And look at that. That's a decent trade. Alorum clearly comfortable with the matchup. When you see Orn W, just start charging Q. Just let it go for the auto view. It's going to work out. So Alorum clearly liking this matchup. But right now, Impact is winning in farm. Uh, already taken some decent early plays. Obviously, forged himself his uh, either Ruby Crystal or Doran's Ring from earlier on. Yes, Impact's going to win in farm by a lot. And they got to be careful around ganks in the top side because Broxa is already here. There, 
is a ward, but if he if he steps a little bit more far forward, I think as soon as he goes to his cannon, he's probably dead. That's knockup. This is the gank. This is the play. He's going to be clapped backwards as well. Lorem could not live this. I don't think coming. a way through. He's going to find the stun. He's going to flash backwards. you got to be kidding me. They actually managed to find the way no in. Flash Double Broxa. slow comes in. Impact does not, or sorry, Broxa does not have flash, and that means the gank comes through. A knockup's going to be disabled by Impact putting the W. I can't believe they got this one. Broxa flashed the stun and couldn't get it in time. That was a great turnaround there. They're able to flash out by time with Alorum, and then Xmithy arrives in Insanity with the quick TP, and they do end up getting the kill there over onto their Olaf, and they force Impact back to base. His TP is going to have to be used. They will lose some farm mid lane, but well worth it there as they protect their top laner and get a kill. Uh, Alorum you know, was very far up, and as soon as his knockup hits, you think he's probably dead. You are assuming that the Olaf will not be here in time to save him, but in he goes. The Q goes off at the same time, knocking up Broxa. Insanity arrives. There's no TP on Broxa there, and they have overcommitted. Even if they got that kill, Zombie Scion would have been enough to help actually turn that one around. So yeah. after the TP is coming through, uh, the best case for TL was a one for one, but it ends up being a one for two. Yeah. I just wanted to see Broxa flash sideways a little bit. Like, it's warded, you know where the Q is coming from. Just just don't be stunned for 300 damage. That fight's a little yeah. bit better, at least. I, I think, think that is mechanical misplay. Regardless of fight. Interrupt it. Yeah, but, you know, didn't in time, obviously. Big damage, and Jensen nearly kills Insanity. Obviously, level difference lets him go for the all in, but doesn't quit with the kill. Will have the farm lead, will enforce Insanity to recall and he does not have TP. This will be a lot of this wave getting canceled, as that is a freeze in front of the turret for Jensen. Yeah, he has the, has the freeze. He gets the flash also, so really nicely done there by Jensen. You know, that was the other part of, of what Insanity actually lost. You know, I mentioned the farm, but he's losing experience too, when he does TP up to that top right. side. Now that the wave is frozen on him, that's fairly problematic uh, because that CS League could extend. Instead, Jensen just wants to save his TP, so he's actually just going to go back to base by after that push. He will deny more farm, so you know, he is trying to make the most out of that TP to the top lane from Insanity. He'll maintain the TP advantage, he'll be up farm, up experience, and uh, able to get back to base and grab another longsword. Well, overall game state right now, 100 gold lead to Team Liquid. Obviously, first blood is some of that, but there was one critter back by Immortals. Overall farm, advantage in the top side, advantage in the mid lane. And, you know, the kill versus farm different spot, that's probably fairly close overall. And mm -hmm. lo and behold, the game is fairly close overall. Level 6 on both top laners here. TP up for Alorum, down for Impact. Flash the other way around. As they just kind of knock down minions back and forth. Impact get some more grass health and... Walks away from the Q, and this could be another knockup. Could be decent damage. Clap. How he goes. It is a winning matchup for Orn, and as you can see, it gets a little bit difficult for Lorem. And you know, when you're forced to actually CS uh, from range, uh, as Scion is in this case. We'll see if they can catch him back. Doesn't look like they're going to commit, but you know all his abilities are AOE. The W pop AOE, E AOE, Q AOE. So it can actually very easily mess up other CS for you uh, when you don't have access to actually walk up and finish them off with your melee. So uh, it does result in you bleeding farm when you are in some of these disadvantageous matchups as Scion. Impact playing it well, you know, punishing as much as he can and, and trying to maintain a pretty strong farm advantage. And let's look at bot lane. About a 10 CS difference here for Apollo and Haku. Well, again, a lot of that was the fact that Tactical had to instantly recall off the first wave after getting that assist. And with only assist, means he only got refillable potion. Brox, though, feeling pretty comfortable on the Vola Bear. With bot lane pressure and mid lane pressure, just even walking over to help. They get that Cloud Drake picked up before eight minutes. So far, so good. Team Liquid should be reasonably comfortable with how the early game is going. And honestly, not even bleeding that much farm in a disadvantageous bot lane matchup is going to feel pretty good as well. Exactly. I mean, when you have Ash Thresh into the Kate Morgana and, and you're playing you know, into an Olaf and you're the one getting the dragon, you're going to be pretty damn happy about that. That being said, uh, Mortals does have a lot of scaling, so it, it's not the standard TL style of game where they can kind of just, you know, depend on their late game and say, all right, just sit back and take incremental advantages. You do want to see them get somewhat proactive uh, unless Jensen can just completely outplay. I do think team fighting is very difficult on Akali come late game, especially, you know, against the likes of Azir who can actually push you out of your shroud against Morgana who can, you know, ultimate you and, and you know, the W is going to help to reveal there. Obviously seeing the shadow of where Jensen is because you can still get AoE uh, in that shroud. Absolutely. So items come through. Haku will get the sight stone online. Sub nine minutes. Not bad there. Swifties grabbed early on by Cora JJ as Cinder Hulk is now done on the Olaf. Of course, Smithy got that kill in the top side. So gets forward a little bit there as Boots and Cinder Hulk is going to feel decent. 
just afterwards gets the sight stone for Core J side. And now we'll see what's going to happen here on this map as we're still waiting to tick down the minutes until the next Drake spawns, but Herald is up, and right away, Xpithy is up there with the stats to make it work. And it's going to be one of those those big ticket soul dragons, because it is going to be Infernal or Ocean. Those seem to be the one that people want to fight over the most. Uh, TL is moving up. Their bot lanes are moving up here too, but Immortals is faster to this. We'll see if they can actually finish this before the TL bot lane does arrive. Looks like they might do it. Be grabbed. No hard engage. Of course, Black Shield was there to just walk into the Ash Arrow. Hakko just self-cast, walks in. Thanks very much. Out we go. No big deal here and no problems at all. So this is going to be Immortals at some point getting a gold lead back with the Herald Charge. Mm -hmm. For a second, it looked like Smithy was just going to run straight top and drop it. But they do decide not to go for that as, as TL you know, pulled out a mid lane. I think that's mostly what he wanted to dissuade them from doing. They're you know, just committing to a five man mid lane push and trying to go for that because Harold would have been dropped top. Uh, Apollo TP's bot lane for just one wave, but uh, doesn't even fully push out the wave. So really got pretty much nothing from that TP, to be honest with you. Uh, the wave is actually in a, in a better state from tactical, so I can't say I love that teleport uh, to get a couple minions and then donate a bunch more to your opponent. He got XP on the cannon. But yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> he didn't have any teammates nearby. Like, I understand why he had to back off, right? Suddenly it's all fog of war, don't have good ward control. But then and don't TP in the first place, just walk down. I, I mean, sure, right? Like, end of the day, it's like, okay, you managed to absorb the XP from the wave that was dying and then had to immediately AFK the rest of it. It, it Yeah, it got a little awkward. I'm not really trying to debate what you're saying. I, I agree with you, but hey, yeah. he played about as well as he could based on <laughs> the fact that there was a lot the fact that he had a bad TP. He played yeah, it I mean, and you already hit TP. It's like, well, okay, now I got to wait. <laughs> Based on the fact that he did the wrong thing, he then did the right thing. I agree yeah. with you, Freak. Hey, to be fair, that is a skill. <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah. You're like, well, uh, I'm done. Zero six All right, I should can stop I do? fighting. You know, like. <laughs> That's hard to do sometimes. Ooh, that, that's actually an impossible skill based on my teammates that I get when I keep League of Legends. Uh-huh. <laughs> Same. All right. Well, they have this hurt low. They have the Rook Herald. And this could very likely be first tower. Um, people seem very hesitant to drop the Rift Herald today, though. I've got to say. You know, Dignitas was kind of flirting with it in a similar way. Uh, there is no bar to prevent it. I, I like just dropping it and walking forward and, and actually getting the last bit of damage down here with that Caitlyn. Uh, instead, he's just hovering around. It seems like he is expecting a response from TL. Obviously, they do not know that Brox is just farming up on this top side, but now the Rift Herald will be dropped as they haven't seen Volibear show. And with this cannon wave and the Rift Herald should be a pretty comfortable tower take. Yeah, as long as there's no counter gank, it's going to be a lot of damage. Not quite the bind, but this turret's going to be halfway on that plate. About six more autos to kill it. And as the Herald goes down, Apollo going to get a minions, but he will get that last auto attack in. First turret goes down 12 minutes. This is the expected value of this lane, is you kill the turret with all the plates. If your opponents are good, they can last it under turret, which they have. Well done to them. Obviously, Core with the... Um, Attack damage version of Relic Shield makes it pretty easy to take those down. Uh, I always forget the names of those. Steel Spalders. Yes, thank you. Um, and regardless, you know, yeah, close in farm, but yeah, you just got about a thousand gold from all the plates in the first turret gold. Thank you, Harold, for doing some of that as well. That's going to feel comfortable. Infinity Edge is in at 12 and a half minutes. That's good timing. Good start here for Immortals. And now the question becomes, can you continue that push, right? Now it looks like they want to go over towards mid lane potentially here, start to siege up on this Kali, who does have to somewhat put her, herself at risk to wave clear effectively. The next dragon going to be spawning here too, and uh, with that item coming through, perhaps mortals will feel comfortable to actually challenge, but it looks like they're trying to go for a collapse onto Impact. He will be able to get out of there though, and uh, it is TL that have priority around this dragon area. There's no vision whatsoever from Immortals, so they're just going to send the bot lane top, and it looks like they will just try to trade dragon for a tower. Okay, well, yeah, they're going to bleed away one drake. It puts TL on two drakes, though, and that can be concerning. It's starting to stack up. It'll be that single mountain drake picked up. We'll see what soul's going to be right afterwards. Top lane, though, is going to lose a lot of health, right? All five plates were available. There's 30 seconds left to knock the rest of these down. They picked up one. They picked up two. Looks like they're going to pick up a third. That is 480 gold earned as payment for a drake. Now, way back in the day, drakes were worth almost 1,000 gold. Uh, that number, of course, has changed over time. It was then less in the early game, more as time scaled on. But ultimately, they traded about 500 gold for a drake as they now go for another turret plate, and it's, you know, getting closer, closer to maybe 700 for a plate. Mm -hmm. But Jensen will be able to trade some back on this bottom side, so not too bad. Uh, and generally, you know, I, I don't really care about getting up two dragons. Uh, a lot of people talk about, oh, you fight the fourth, and that's kind of what people say. But honestly, it's, it's almost always you fight the third. 
uh, giving up soul point I think is just too risky. If you give up soul point, you're saying we'll never make another mistake again and give up soul, which is just unrealistic. Uh, there's a high chance that you'll, you'll drop a dragon at some point to a steal or something, but looks like a, a mortals gonna get dope potentially, but nicely played. Alorum, no one actually behind him there to block the ultimate. Does get the ultimate out of Jensen and uh, a lot of damage down oh, on Jensen. Too. Yeah, and they're still pushing on top side. Sure, yeah, that, that turret is entirely gone. Of course, top and bottom outers were both traded back and forth. 700 gold difference is still the game. And that is TL, of course, 2-0 to zero on Drake. Too. But look at this, yes, mid is under fire. The entire squad comes down. We're just trading objectives back and forth here as the mortals look to grab their third turret. Demolish comes through, and that is the turret gone. So all three outers claim within two minutes of each other as the mortals get all those gone, get the gold lead to 1,200. And TL kind of botched that down on the on the bottom side. Not only did Alorum actually get to step forward and kill off the full wave, he then got to alt out in a 1v4. So, you know, he played that very well, and TL did mis-execute, which meant that, you know, you have so many members down on the bottom side that have to tank up the turret. There's backdoor protection, so it's going down slowly. That gave the Azir of time push in mid lane. They take both the tower, you know, out top uh, and that tower in mid, so... Uh, Immortal's going to be feeling really, really good. I, I do feel that they are the team that outscales. Yes, TL could outplay. They are the better team. But they are not in a good spot right now. And they have been slamming teams like this over the last couple weeks. Teams that are below them in the standings has not even been remotely close. This is a game that they are losing both from the perspective of you know the current gold, um, but also just uh, compositionally, I, I do think that they are the ones with more pressure on them. They have the advantage of the two dragons, which is nice, and if they can continue picking those up, uh, that will you know, alleviate a lot of the issues that they have uh, with some of the, the scaling. But overall, they have a very low damage composition, and Immortals, I think, would, would take this spot uh, anytime if offered. Yeah, it feels good, especially when you're against TL. It's the 10th place versus the first place team, and Immortals are playing them close, playing them slightly ahead right now. Team Liquid trying to play for some more ward control. Tactical takes a little bit of damage, but he's fine. And we have the second Herald alive. It's warded right now by Team Liquid, but Smithy can either ignore it and go for it anyway, or, you know, try to clear it out at some point. Corey Jade still roaming around to that side of the map. He's the only one of the kill right now, and that was a first blood given over by a very aggressive 2 on 2 at level 1. Otherwise, TL have only been able to kind of answer what Immortals have been doing. Not a lot correct for them just yet, aside from the Drake stacking, which, to be fair, is a good something. Mm -hmm. Wave goes down, and now the Herald is started. Alorum does have TP, so he is going to commit it. Looks like they want to try to fight this, and they do have a binding there over on a core JJ. Towards the flash of the thrash, he's got the lantern over the wall. Jensen goes in, they find the stun, they find a combo. Flashes right back in, an easy kill picked up, but Tactical loses his life as well. And in the front line, they found an impact as well. Couldn't ult, couldn't flash, couldn't do anything. A two for one in kills, Immortals winning in this side of the map, and they'll get the Herald as well. Two for one in kills, they grab Herald, uh, they force flash off core JJ. Really nicely done for them overall. They even got the flash out of Jensen. Yes, Insanity died, but it didn't cost them any of his summoners. And in the rest of the, the fight, they, they just dominated that. So it was a nice little play there from Tactical and Jensen to take out the mid later. But Rift Herald dropped, so bad goes to worse. Immortals are really taking control in this game here. And if they can grab that next dragon, they have really cut off a lot of the options that TL has. Because right now, the only advantage that TL has is their dragon lead. And if you just take that one Infernal away from them, you push back soul so far that I don't even think you care about it anymore as Immortals. But here it is one more time. Jensen very intelligently knows that Insanity was coming from that top side because they had seen him clear out the wave. He had the Shuriken flip prepped, really nicely done. It was a great ulti from Insanity, but the Ash Arrow was even better there from Tactical. He was stunned up from long range, and Akali able to just flash over that, take him down, but on the other side, it was Immortals winning out and winning out big, and they now have you know, the job here of trying to take away this next dragon. Uh, TL does have vision in the area, and it is Akali sneaking around behind, so we'll see, can Immortals get control of this mid lane to move in and, and get vision? And also, can they actually track where Akali is? Because he is coming in on the flank. Level 13, he's got all his damage abilities Spotted maxed now. now. Ready to look for the play, a dive onto the front side, or a hook, I should say, as Alorum is going to tank up for now. Going to fight for the ward is Jensen. We know Infernal Drake is alive. TL would love to get the soul point and then get to Infernal Soul themselves. Mid pushed in, the wave mostly crashes, and now the Drake is leashed. Expect the level 10. One behind Broxus. This might is slightly better on the TL side. 
and they're going to start fighting back and forth for it. Looking for the plays. Hawkshark reveals the entire squad. Immortals looking for when their engage might Jensen be. Jensen bound. Back has his own ulti. They find the bind. They try to push oh, back. Oh, he missed. can't get it, though. He's going to get Lantern back to safety if he wants it, and he's not going to pull it. He's going to splash plant over instead and go for the Drake. It's going to be the fight fight picked up there by Broxa, and the fight might continue. But there's nothing picked up there for Immortals. They get nothing for it. They get to walk towards mid, and that's it. Three Drakes now for Team Liquid. Gold lead might not matter. They're about to find themselves Infernal Soul in four and a half. That is so big for TL. Smithy not able to find the smite steal. And Immortals committed very heavily to Jensen when they actually landed that binding. But Insanity misjudged how far up he was compared to where Jensen was actually bound. So he doesn't actually hit the ultimate on the Shroud. Otherwise, he would have scooped Jensen right out of that Shroud and been able to knock him down. So instead of actually getting an easy kill, they get nothing on the side. He just gets Lantern over into the pit and they get that dragon too. So I feel like Immortals could have just potentially committed over towards that dragon pit and I think just maybe even won the team fight. Instead, they were so nervous about Jensen on the side that TL manages it better, escapes and gets the dragon and, and now has a win condition in this game. Because I think if that goes over to Immortals, I'm feeling like it's an Immortals win. Alrighty, well, wave getting cleared out by Alorum in the bottom side. Infinite scaling tank versus high scaling tank as well on the impact side with the item upgrades coming in very soon. Sunfire Cape done, Abyssal Mask coming in shortly. Somewhat similar builds coming through from the Lorem side, although it looks more like an adaptive helm. Um, we'll see what comes through at the end of the day. Still waiting for the next big move. 2,500 gold lead for Immortals, contested by three Drakes on the Team Liquid side. 330 till Infernal Soul. This has got to be harrowing on the Immortal side. They have to know they cannot lose another contest in that bottom river. They don't have to die. It's just if the smite's not good enough, that's you know, functionally barren picked up in terms of the amount of power you've gained. It's, it's TL feeling really good about it. And that's why it's it's so scary to to give up that soul point because as you say they don't even have to lose the fight it's just one smite steal or maybe one person gets picked off by an ash arrow and then you can't approach you know only one thing has to go wrong and then you have given over this soul that lasts forever it's not even though you can just wait it out like you can with you know Baron and some of these other super powerful buffs it is there for good. That being said, I do think Immortals are getting themselves to a really strong point as far as uh, the items are going. You know, building towards that Leandries, I think, is fantastic here from Insanity. You're going to be hitting a lot of health stackers. You're going to be hitting the Orin. You're going to be hitting the Volibear. And that plus Nashers will be shredding through. Caitlyn going for this high DPS build that you are a fan of. Stacking the BFs up here does have... Yep. Um, you know, that double BF build already complete. We'll see if he wants to go towards the Essence Reaver uh, for the Trifecta, or if he is going to go back towards that Rapid Fire that you know, pros really do love. Yeah, almost everyone gets a Zeal upgrade third. Uh, we see Stormers are more than ER second, but um, either one is pretty good. I think it's actually pretty close. It's kind of how you want to play it out. Regardless, it is still, look at this, yes, still 2,000 and change. The gold lead for Immortals. The timer now is two minutes, though. And honestly, TL just having nothing happen, right? Weathering a gold deficit and saying it's okay. In two minutes, it's the climactic moment. You know, that, that's when we're going to make it happen. I think it's going to feel pretty comfortable for them. Waiting to see if Jensen's split push can do anything. Right now, it's only really farming equally to Insanity. And look, if you can pilot it, then great, right? A Kali played perfectly is going to wreak so much havoc. But if you're playing a generic team fight, it's got to feel really good being Azir. It, it definitely does. And that's why Immortals still have a shot in this game, right? It is soul point here for TL, but if you can actually de de deny that soul from coming through, excuse me, um, then it, you know it's going to look good for you in the team fights. Immortals has really, really strong uh, front to back style fighting. Uh, the Caitlyn as well as the Azir are going to really be able to shred through a lot of the frontliners, and it's it's difficult for for the Akali to make the same sort of things happen. But Jensen has to be creative about the angles he finds. We did see how much pressure he was able to exert just by threatening the flank in the previous dragon fight. So he has to be a little bit more clever, a little bit more thoughtful about the angles from which he is approaching. Uh, but if he is able to pull that off, it can still be very very effective in a team fight uh, with champions like Akali. Here we go. 53 seconds. We're just counting it down, waiting for it to happen. Immortals fighting for a playoff spot. They've got to win today or they've got to win tomorrow against FlyQuest to tie for eighth place and have a shot at the postseason. Team Liquid, win today or win tomorrow. You lock first place in the regular season. You lock the playoff by. You lock first seed. 35 seconds for Infernal Soul. Ooh, Team, Team Liquid Michael Baron. playing topside. Yeah, so this, this is the other advantage. When you have Soul point, you know, it's such a threat that your opponents have to respect this. They have to be over there. They're actually going to try to two-man Baron, potentially. They were standing on the Blast Cone, looking like they want to go for it. Yeah, they're... Uh, no, not quite. 
Uh, but they, they were threatening that. And, and this is something where it's like, for Immortals, if you give up a dragon now, you probably lose the game. For TL, if you give up a dragon, it's not as big of a deal. And if you can trade the Baron for that, that can sometimes be worthwhile, but they really do want this soul. They are back down towards the bottom side. Insanity did not get his Leandris, though. He didn't actually base in time uh, to be able to spend that gold. And it is Jensen down below them, looking to set this up. But there is a really tough line of traps to get through. So it is Immortal starting this up. They know that Brox is pretty far away right now. Positioning you want, you're gonna hope you can find it. A nice little bind right there, moving away for a second is impact. Doesn't mean all that much, because the root still happens. Brox eats one of the traps. And we get this one a little bit lower. 2,500 left on that one. It's going to be a root on the back side. Can they catch Ash? Only a little bit of damage, not too much overall. And come back into the team. 2,900 on the Drake. Tactical on the front side, going for a bit more damage, slowed by an axe, but Jensen still blanking. waiting around. Jensen tries to find the flank, can't get it just yet. Might fight comes soon. Level 12 on both junglers. Here comes the engage. Here comes it back to the front line. Finds a stun. It is going to be Smithy who picks it up for a time, but insanity is gone. Hakko on the backside might be attacked as well, and he will be. Two for zero, making a third. It is a team fight complete stomp for Team Liquid. You bleed the Drake, you find three kills. We take those and they go to the top side. Yeah, TL able to play that out very, very well here in the 5v5. Insanity gets picked off. Jensen, again, drawing so much attention on this potential flank that they're not able to, to effectively fight. You know, they can't just ignore Jensen, who's on the Sakali, and it will mean they grab themselves the Baron. So, yes, the soul is denied, but they get themselves another potential win condition here. Should just about tie up the gold and probably will go in the lead throughout this Baron power play as you expect them to grab at least a tower or two. Yeah, and if I'm TL, I almost like the Baron more than taking the Drake here at this point. I mean, you get the kills, you get the shutdowns on some of them, and you're ready to go back into the but point. why not both? That's well, what they sure, would really love. <laughs> yeah. uh, so here it is one more time. Jensen, again, he, he's threatening on the flank, and look at all the damage that Insania has taken. He's actually been poked out quite a bit by the Ash, and then the full or combo from Impact. And this is just a, a game-winning, potentially, fight out of Impact. He basically zeroed out Insanity there on the Azir as the Orn being the difference maker here. He'd been poked down by Johnson. He hits both halves of the ultimate. And then Insanity tries to flash the E and fails and gets knocked up anyway. So Impact just game changing in that team fight. So much credit deserved by him. You do not expect the Orn to be almost 100 zeroing the carry Azir at this point in the game. Yeah, well, you saw it in the last team fight graphic. So little damage dealt by really anyone on the Immortal side. It yep. couldn't get any shots across. CC Laring obviously really good for that one. Apollo had to simply run away. He was actually out of mana, the one downside of not getting the Reaver second. And I know everyone goes presence of mind, but with one assist, that is a 100 bonus mana for the rune. You don't really have the mana pool to sustain trap spam, and that's been happening here. Apollo cues down the wave, and now it's time to weather the storm. Baron buff on for a minute 45 as the second turret falls. A top lane split push. Now on the bottom side is impact. You can see how slowly these minions die as his turret gets lower and lower. Impact safely pushing around going towards his next big upgrade, going there eventually. But Team Liquid have turned the game now to their favor. 400 gold lead still on Soul Point. They are in the gold lead, but you know, if, if I'm Immortals, I actually think I, I would rather have given up the Baron than that Soul, because this is something you can wait out. And this is something that you can say, okay, it's going to expire, and then we still have potentially that scaling event. Potentially we can get a better fight. Uh, because in that last one, Apollo was, was zoned out completely by Jensen, out, out of mana, and Insanity just died to the Orn. He got hit by everything, didn't use his flash correctly, and does end up going down as a result. So it's not as though they cannot win these fights uh, as long as they can withstand this push. 50 seconds left on it. TL has done a good job picking up additional gold here. 2,800 now, the Baron power play, you know, from that deficit to a comfortable lead now. But you know, Leandris has been picked up, and we'll see how Immortals looks in two minutes because it's going to be about the dragon fights. It's going to be all about can Immortals prevent TL from getting to the soul. Yeah, well, end of the day, Team Liquid, they get the Baron, the resulting push, the resulting gold, gives them 3,000 gold worth of stats, worth of Infinity Edge upgrades, worth of, you know, flat pen coming through, void stats coming through. Sometimes that contributes more damage to the Infernal Soul. Regardless, it is obviously beneficial on all sides. And Team Liquid looking to play around that. That Drake is still going to be the focus of attention. And now, as the items are better on the Team Liquid side, now that the levels are higher on the Team Liquid side, that Dragon Fight is going to be even easier than last time. 
but can they get that same level of engage? Can they expect that same level of dominance, right? You know, we're, we're not sure if they're going to be able to, to find that kind of an incredible fight where they just kill off Insanity, they zone out Apollo, because both those carries basically did nothing. And they're both very strong at this point. You know, we have the Last Whisper coming through. We have Leandries plus working towards the Death Cap now. Uh, so these guys are going to really do a lot of damage to these tanks as long as they can stay safe. But uh, Jensen has been playing very well. And Jensen has been finding angles to threaten the carries and to you know not just run straight at him. He's always been coming from behind. No one has been able to really lock him down. And with him being level 16 as well, you know, on three items, he is he's a legitimate threat to 100 to zero someone uh, if he can find the angle. Oh, here we go. Dragon fight again. 30 seconds away. A hook on the front line. This could be the target. And Smithy gets dropped fairly low. Looks for a stun on an impact. Can't find that one. Without a jungler, oh, Jensen wants it. Trouble. Big damage to the beginning. beginning. Second ult's going to come through in a second. Gets the shutdown. Gets the kill. Jensen comes out alive. Knockup only finds one. Insanity is still safe, but it's going to be the ult away from Alorum. Not going to get through that one. A double kill now for the mid laner. Jensen's going to feel comfy on this one. Drake up in 10 seconds. No jungler alive. The easiest Inferno circle of your life. Jensen, the difference maker again here, catching Smithy, who wasn't too concerned about the chunk damage because he had the war mods, but in comes Jensen, knocks down Smithy, plus forcing his flash out there, and TL making no doubt about this one. Everyone from TL zoning out, keeping everyone away from that dragon, making sure there's no chance of a steal whatsoever. And now with the gold lead, with the soul, you have to feel like TL has everything they need to win this game. Yep, almost feels like overkill at this point. They've gotten online. Jensen playing a colleague for the first time this split. The first melee champion, the first really heavy split pusher of summer. And he has, as you said, become the difference maker. The individual plays, the picks on the side lane, the split push pressure. Right, Part of that Baron power play, part of the gold lead they grew for themselves was Jensen comfortably in the top lane, knocking down a turret, pushing in the waves, forcing Immortals have to play that one defensively. And, well, Team Liquid have certainly turned the corner from an awkward early and mid game. They've got the Dragon Soul, they've got the gold lead. And you maybe say, okay, in 45 seconds, you grab Baron and use that to close out the game. Mm -hmm. We'll see if they're going to be able to do that because there is still a good wave clear on Immortals. And at the very least, you can save for Immortals. They did not get blown out this game. TL has been trashing teams that are lower in the standings lately. And this has not been that same dominant style of game. Uh, they are comfortable in, in this game. They are you know, in the lead in this game, but Immortals uh, has made them work for it. And, you know, if they were able to execute a little bit better, might be in an even better position. So we'll see if they can hang on here. Can they keep TL away from that Baron? Because I agree, you know, when you have that soul, if you can grab the Baron too, uh, it's probably lights out. Well, it's going to be the play around the top side. Immortals knows they have to fight for something, but the problem is have they gotten too far behind. Armor Pen in for Apollo. Better at tank killing, but the Randuin's done for impact. Makes him incredibly hard to kill. Jets is still waiting around, playing on his control wards. Knows he's not seen, but doesn't find that flank play just yet. Insanity pushes out the top side, brings TP to get to the lane. Not quite the death cap. That would have been a nice power spike to hit on the Azir. It would have been a big deal in the team fights if he was able to attack, but it may not matter all the same. Level 16 on him, only 14 on Apollo. And now we get the start on Baron Nash, revealed by the Trinket Ward. Immortals have to try to find some way in. Smithy is as tanky as he can be. Randuin's got the, uh, you know, tankiness that he can get with the Cinder Hulk and everything else, but it might just not be enough. Still weathering down this Baron. Immortals pushing in and going to push TL outside of the pit, buying himself a little bit of time. They will get them off of it, and they will have first shot at pushing out mid lane here. So they get control, and then they can, you know, make TL be the ones to move back and respond to this wave. Now they're going for the engage here. Going backwards, good damage. Jensen's front far. Line. It's going to be pretty hard to kill the top laner. Impact is low, and they're going to chase him down. He's he gets a kill. A re-engage the shuffle for insanity. Rook of the Yield killed another one. It's a battle between the two of them, it's as now that is a 5v3 in the base. And look at the death timers. They can actually potentially try to go for an end here. There's there's 50 seconds on some of these death timers. They have a wave coming up after this. So will they continue to go? The base is coming up from a sandy because he's low. So I don't think they're actually trying to end. They may retreat back to the Baron instead. But this will be the inhibitor and potentially the Baron there. As Jensen was split, they get caught out and they did not have teleport on Jensen there. So Baron. big couple kills. Yeah, they've got to go towards it quickly. Uh, they are. There's they never are a better time to get a Baron comeback. Yeah. You kill Baron, you tie the gold right away, then use the Baron buff to get the rest of it. Now, Impact is alive in eight seconds with Teleport, but does not have the ulti. Tap goes alive in three. Also, no ultimate. 
Now here comes the play. TP's got to come in instantly for impact. Where's it coming? Right down to the middle lane. Now junglers are live on both sides. Broxa is a level over at Smithy. Has flash, has a blast cone, has the smite. And that means all Immortals gets is the forced teleport. They could not get themselves into a fight. They did not have engage tools. They couldn't find a binding or anything else. So all they will get is some gold, a dead inhibitor, and a reset waiting for the next Baron Dance. Oh, you know, that hook. Oh. I, I've honestly got to say, I wonder if it would have just been better to take Baron. You know, grabbing mid lane inhibitor Hello. is nice, but like now there is so much pressure on, in, in the middle of the map here. Um, you know, and, and TL is just going to be staying out on the map. They have the fresh resets. They just bought. Immortals didn't reset. They may lose Baron off of this as a result now. Apollo oh, does have TP, back in. Though. Zion did the same, so they will have all five Jensen players. on the this side here. Fight yet again. Can they find the engage? It's low towards Broxa. Baron hits them down to half HP. Rapid Fire Cannon is done for the Caitlyn, so four item Caitlyn is online. And with the armor pen means she does a decent job of killing out impact. It's the same yeah. build we had seen more or less earlier on from Cody's son. Wasn't enough to close because of split pushing. We go to 2,000 gold difference and the Drake spawns in 125. And they do have the auto push in mid lane now, so because TL couldn't actually rush it down, they were able to defend that with their double TP here. Uh, so they do stay safe from that. Uh, they could move back up towards that Baron. They could look to try to fight around that Elder as well. Uh, Elder is incredibly powerful, but you know TL, TL has got to be careful. I mean, if they if they actually mis-execute in another fight, if they lose another team fight here, the march down mid lane and just ending the game that is a very real possibility. Death timers are really long at this point, and there's no tower or inhibitor in that mid lane. Jensen though on the flank here uh, has has been marked fairly well in these last couple fights, but if you lose track of him even one time and he gets onto Insanity or Apollo, that could spell the end of the game. Looking at plays now in the mid lane. All five are here he is. looking for the play. Looking for knockout on impact. Can't find that one just yet. Akali is on the flank though. She's almost in range. Dragon in 35. Baron's already up. A root on the top laner. Going for big damage on impact. Burns his stopwatch. Alorm is running out of health. Getting shredded by Ash. Tactical finds that kill. Reengage is not going to be found there. CC seeing Alorm and he is not going to be in this fight. It's a 5v4. And the Orn Horn's going on a three. No, the root comes in time to track. not get the knockup. But they got to be careful. They're going for the reengage. The pull is in. Hakuho. He's Gonna try to burn those way around. Apollo staying alive. The duck comes back in. Impact running out of health. But there comes the Akali. Goodbye to the AD carry. Goodbye to the jungler. His kills coming through, and only insanity is left with a sliver of health. Team Liquid have four alive, and they have map control completely for them. They finally get that huge team fight win. They are going over to the Elder. Does not look like they will be able to, to march down mid lane and get anything more from that, but they should be able to grab the double. Neutral objectives here. Grab the Elder for yourselves, charge on up, grab the Baron, see if you can end the game with that. And again, this just felt like a matter of, of Jensen zoning people away because it was Immortals who had the initial angle to actually go over onto Impact, but it just didn't seem like Insanity and Apollo were able to comfortably get damage out onto him because uh, of the fact that Jensen was coming around and because of the stopwatch, which honestly may be a game-winning stopwatch here as the binding did land, they go for the commitment onto him, but he just pops in the stopwatch and then Jensen just threatening Insanity. Insanity's not hitting anyone right now. Jensen's just kind of wiggling back and forth over nearby him, threatening the range for the ultimate, you know, buying time and that plus the stopwatch was enough. But then Impact, big mistake there, stepping onto the trap, not allowing himself to redirect in because that did mean that as as Tactical stepped forward, Tactical is just blown up here by Insanity. You cannot get in range of a Zir like that, and Insanity goes in, wipes Ash off the map. But it is TL. They did not get the Baron, so they do have the Elder. They still can go towards that Baron, and I think Immortals, at this point, you're just you're just trying to give up everything, and you're just trying to continue farming it out. It is only a minute 30 on this Elder. You've already withstood Baron before. The siege from TL is honestly pretty terrible. So, I think I think as Immortals, you're okay giving this up. I actually think it's smarter to just not fight. Oh, Hakuo, Hakuo, yeah. you just ran through Fog of War. Yeah. He gets the shield. Doesn't matter. Why go that way? They had pushed in mid. You had no vision. That is a huge mistake. It means that yeah. there is not a contest at all for Baron. This is given away. But, but honestly, like, they couldn't challenge anyway. Why yeah. even go over there? What is the vision going to do for you if you can't fight? And you can't fight when they have elders. So uh, you have no business being in that area. Keep keep some you know peripheral defensive vision and, and farm it out. You're going to be stuck in your base until Baron expires. You're never going to fight into elder. So there's only you know wave and a half of that elder buff. Uh, maybe you have to give up a tower or two, whatever. Uh, Caitlyn is close to six items. You have the Azir who has death cap and is, is continuing to scale up. So you have ways into this game, man. 
You know, I, I think that was a foolish death from Hakuo, which means they lose all pressure on the map and maybe just going to lose their inhibitor instantly at the start of this Baron push. Back alive from the attempt for it. A little bit of gold in the pocket doesn't mean all that much at this point in the game as the builds are mostly Jensen finalized. The wall comes Jensen. This could be the play. Not going to find the knockup, though, from Impact. This could be the re-engage as now, without the Ornalty, this fight could be done. But it's for auto attacks. Big damage. Tactical's got to get a shield. He's going to walk away as Impact tanks the ulti. That trap was oh. painful. Mid turret took some damage, mid inhibitor is one hit from dead. Next minion kills it, but they can't go for it just yet. Azir turret comes online, the wave through comes through for Caitlyn, and Immortals will not yet lose the inhibitor. So this is Baron buff on, and Team Liquid are gun shy sieging. Uh huh. Yeah, I mean, the Elder is gone now. So the last cannon shot didn't come out of that Baron cannon minion to actually kill off the inhibitor. That barely survives. Uh, and Immortals, yeah, I mean, the, the Siege from, from TL is, is just terrible, and that, that's why I feel like you could have even potentially defended that mid lane tower had Hakuo not given up his life. Uh, that is in the past, though, so we will move on. Uh, either way, they keep their inhibitor alive, uh, and TL needs to fight to actually win this game. They need to get kills because it's only the Ash who has any range, and Ash can't just walk up to the tower uh, and start and start shooting it. You know, it's, it's very dangerous to do that. So, Immortals still hanging around here, you know, 10 minutes... 15 minutes after, uh, TL actually grabbed the soul for themselves. Well, the scaling is almost done on a lot of sides right here. There is one slot left to upgrade for a lot of these champions. You've got Ruby Crystal is going to be the last item for impact. One open slot here on Alorum. Uh, you've got Bramble Vest at a stopwatch, Phoenix Codex at a stopwatch, and just a hex to finish upgrading on Apollo's side. Very similar things here. Tactical is done yeah. buying items. Jensen can only finish Merle and Amicon. There's more room to grow for Immortals, right? You know, th their carries still have uh, a full item uh, plus a little bit extra to actually buy, um, you know, in the mid lane here. So that could be, you know, Sonya's plus an additional item. We'll see if they can hang on here and try to defend this mid lane turret. Uh, it looks like they are stepping a bit forward, but as the bot lane wave is cleared out, top lane wave is not pushing for TL, so they can't even step forward to actually take down this inhibitor. You're giving Apollo time to actually finish uh, what is going to be uh, this mob of Malvordius and Insanity, you know, he, he can buy a lot, right? Like, he, he's got a lot of use for all this gold, so the more time he gets, the better it is. And this is the last wave here for TL on this Baron buff, and they didn't even take an inhibitor. And they're looking at it, but they're going to not really walk all the way forward. Alorum threatening enough, and really only land for to keep Tactical safe. Yes, he has Flash, but not willing to put themselves forward. So despite having Baron, and a 7-9, actually, 1,000 gold Elder. lead, they are unwilling to look at the inhibitor. They are simply going to let it live and they're not going to wait. And honestly, we might see them wait another two minutes. Leave Elder up. Get both neutrals at the same time and use that to seed. The longer you wait, the closer Immortals gets. And Infernal Soul is only so much damage. Some on the front side, but that is the tank. That doesn't mean a whole lot. Stone Plate pop for impact and Team Liquid are now missing two of their about eight big cooldowns. And what this shows me is that TL is actually never going to be able to siege. They are going to play only for the team fight, which is going to be around these neutral objectives. So they're just going to wait for Baron, wait for Elder, hope that TL uh, is able to get a fight there. You know, that Immortals walks forward and they can find a flank from Jensen, because I don't think that they're comfortable fighting without the Akali flank. And right now, Jensen is up on that top side trying to get pressure. Uh, they will have the vision advantage very heavily because Immortals hasn't been leaving their, their base whatsoever. Someone's going to have to actually respond to Jensen as well. So TL are going to have the advantage of actually being set up in this area. Um, but Immortals walking out, they did have Hakuo just base because he needed to get some more wards. Uh, refills the sight zone, grabs a couple of pinks. So they're trying to fight back in the vision department, trying to get control of this mid lane as mid lane inhibitor has respawned for TL. So it is now about who can get the push in this mid lane and gain access to that dragon pit as Elder spawns. Okay, Elder is alive right now. Team Liquid playing bottom river. They got some decent wards. Alorum in the front side. Done buying items for Jensen and Tatsu. Jensen is finished from Amicon, And we might have the fight coming in soon as they get some damage to the front side. And Smithy pulled in, has to jump backwards. And Alorum, you can see, takes big damage as well from Jensen. That is now a health bar lead on the TL side, healing right back up against Elder. But Immortals must take this fight. But Impact is an impassable wall on the front side. Brock's going to zone him out. And Tactical can easily pull this Drake and heal up with his Blade of the Ruin King. When does Immortals go away? Smithy is not quite stunned. Black Earth comes through, and there is no contest that is going to be claimed. And here comes the play. This could be the fight. Four-man stun. In he goes, and it's not going to be anything but the kill onto Alorum. 
taken out by Jensen, ready to chase in some more. Immortals, how can they fight this? They are 4v5, damage on Aqua, gets the summoner heal, but they are ready to chase down. There's the flash, there's the stun, there's the kill on the backside. Aqua is going to burn down, he will be claiming Smithy as well, and that's gonna be it, Team Liquid. They had to work for it, but they will claim four kills, and they can absolutely push down for the base now. Ball is going to TP back to base, but should not be enough here to defend. And Immortals just were unwilling to fully walk in and actually commit to that Elder Dragon fight. So again, I've got to ask, why were you even there in the first place if you're not willing to fight for it? Stay in your base where you have a more defensible position. Instead, TL finds the angle, they find the fight, they've grabbed the Elder, and they are poised to close this one out and grab their 14th victory, securing first place in the LCS Summer Split. Unless somehow the defense comes through, but it's gonna be a three versus five. This seems almost impossible. Team Liquid knocked down the first turret. Alorum is here. They go for the second one as well. Can TL even be stopped? There's some damage on the front side. They're gonna root one up, but it's gonna be the zombie sign, which means they might just kill Impact, but not just yet. Jensen's ready to go. He's ready to find himself a kill. The turrets are gone. They've kited the team away. They're finding all the kills. They're gonna find themselves the first seed. Team Liquid will get their 14th win. They will take the Bud Light Ace, they will take the Nexus, they will take the KDA, pad in the stats, give them the triple kill, 9-0 oh, and 8 on the Akali. Team Liquid grab the first seed, taking down Immortal. Really well done there by TL to finally close this one out. They found the fight they needed. They do get the win, but I've got to say, this was... Uh, you know, pretty lukewarm game from TL as, as far as, you know, their performance has yeah. been concerned lately. It feels like they wanted to bring out a different look here, try to threaten a different option going into playoffs. Say, hey, guys, we can play a colleague too. You got to watch out for that. This was, I think, their least impressive game in quite some time. This is the number one seed versus the number 10 seed. I expected domination. What I got was a, a very closely contested game where I felt like Immortals' indecision really did cost them. Yeah, and it's interesting because you look at the stat lines, you're like, well, you had a 9-0-8 Akali. Jensen can yep. clearly play it all, right? Like, if you look at the post-game screen, you're like, wow, wait, yeah, we're good to go. But you look at the game, how it went, the gold graph, how the, the lanes shaped out. I, you know, I, I agree. Like, this 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 looked more like the first nine games TL and not the last seven where they were mm -hmm. taking names and, and crushing everybody. This feels like, wow, you barely beat Immortals. That's, well, you won, but, you know, we don't, we're, we're questioning you here. I don't know. I, 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 there's more to play. We will see them play TSM tomorrow. That is your test against what is, I mean, literally the hottest team in the LCS. The highest winning streak right now belongs to TSM. TLTSM may well be the battle for the number one and two teams in the league. We know TSM can get that second seed and take it from Cloud9. Maybe with tiebreakers, we'll see what happens. But that is the hype fight, right? That is what we're going to look yep. for tomorrow to say, look, TL, you did this, but what do you do against TSM? On the TSM side, how high can you punch up? Can you take the number one spot? Look, TL gets first place, but TSM, can you beat them, get the other bye, and then take them down to the upper bracket final? Certainly doable. I, you know, it's just, it's a battle I want to see. For Immortals, they have one more shot. If they play FlyQuest, well, they will play them. They'll play them tomorrow. If they <laughs> win, they can force that tiebreak or, you know, have a chance at that tiebreak for the last playoff spot. So Immortals not yet done, and you play TL close, so maybe you can do it.